hey, stay with us. We're going to make some sauerkraut. No, we're not going to smoke it. We're going to make it. Okay, we're going to make some sauerkraut, and we're getting ready to sterilize these jars. We're going to be making four quarts and four pints of sauerkraut. I had intentions of making four quarts plus eight pints, but cabbage kind of run low. Okay, I put my jars in my canning pot. I'm going to bring it to a boil and let them boil for about 10 minutes to sterilize them. And the lids are sterilized also. Okay, we've got six heads of cabbage and I'm going to get them ready. That's one of the smaller ones there. The way I make this sauerkraut is from my mama's recipe. This is the way she made it and she always made really good sauerkraut. Now this is a easy way to make sauerkraut. Now again, this is the way my mama done it and the way I do it now. Now I change it up a little bit, maybe add a little more salt or a little less salt, depending on how it, you know, how I want it to taste. Now you can taste this. Uh, you'll see in a minute how we put the salt with it. And when you put the salt in there, and, and, and again, the salt I use is a canning salt. You don't want to use iodized salt. Anything with iodized, use a sea salt or Himalayan or uh, something like that. I use a canning salt uh, to salt my cabbage. If you're going to make sauerkraut, uh, I encourage everyone who hasn't made it, get on the internet and do some research and make sure of all the safety precautions of making sauerkraut, uh, which I've never had a problem with it, but uh, you know, I just want everybody to be safe when they can and make things that uh, they're going to put up to keep uh, for a later date. and. Uh, so do your research uh, whenever you make sauerkraut. Okay, I shred up two heads of cabbage at a time here and uh, put it in this bowl. Okay, when I cut it in two, then I cut out the stem uh, base of it, the heart of the stem, and uh, then I slice it up and uh, and and eighth to a quarter inch slices and then it just comes apart when you put it in a bowl. The two heads of cabbage really fills this bowl up and it's a it's it's a pretty large bowl and when you sprinkle the salt over it it's going to make it sweat and you'll work it with your hands and it'll release the water from the uh, cabbage, which will help keep it crisp uh, when you can it. And after you open it later, it'll be crisp uh, to eat. Now I use about two tablespoons, maybe a little more, and I sprinkle it around in there and uh, then I'm going to work it around now. This bowl is full, so, uh, but you got to get it all in there and get it all incorporated uh, so you can make that cabbage to start sweating. And you'll see what I mean here in a little bit, and it really brings it out, brings the water out of the cabbage and, and does a really good job. And of course, it's going to shrink down uh, because it pulls the water out of it. Now the water it pulls out of this cabbage is also our brine to make the sauerkraut with. Now once you get that salt all incorporated in it, you keep working it like I am here and it'll get the water out of the cabbage and that's what our brine's going to be and it's going to be salty and that's what makes our sauerkraut. Uh, so you just keep working it and you'll find it starts getting smaller and everything as you go along because you're getting all the water out of that cabbage. And again, this cannon salt I use, the only ingredients in it, it just says salt. No other ingredients in it.
Now you can taste it at this point, taste the salt you have in it. Uh, that would give you an idea of how salty you want your sauerkraut or what it might taste like uh, once it's fermented and done. Uh, so at this point you could taste it, you could rinse it more, add a little more, whatever you wanted to do. Now you can see what we've done when we work it and that salt does give us a little more room in that bowl. Now we didn't rinse all the salt off of it. You can, uh, after we get through here, I think I taste it. I don't know if it shows it. I, I grab a piece to see if it's salty. And it is salty. Uh, you don't by no means rinse all the salt off of it. Okay, at this point I believe our jars are ready. Uh, started getting them out already and uh, we'll get them all set up and start uh, start canning some sauerkraut. Okay, it's time to start stuffing these jars. Now you're going to see this juice start forming as we pack it. Uh, I've got a little wooden uh, thing up here that uh, I used to pack it with. I remember my mama, she would pack it and she'd say, my thumbs were getting sore. And, but she'd pack it with her thumbs, not quart jars to pint. She'd fill them up and put as much as she could. Of course, she'd use wooden spoon handles and everything else to pack it in there. So I turned this uh, deal here, I call it a thumb saver. I turned it on my lathe and finished it up and works quite well. If you look where the arrow is, you can see that brine starting to rise in there. And you want this brine above the cabbage. You don't want any of the cabbage to contact with air. And you can leave it a little low, make you a, a brine on the side, uh, mix up some water in your uh, canning salt mix some of that up so if you don't have enough brine to come above that then you can always add a little of that on top uh, to help it out and also you can take the big leaves that you pull off your cabbage uh, wash them and take some of them to lay around uh, you cut them you don't I just tear them and on some of them just tear them where they'll fit inside there and put it on top where the cabbage will be underneath that leaf and that will help it also. Okay, we're getting close to being able to put our lid and ring on. Uh, just make sure you get it packed down in there. Uh, make sure the brine is above the cabbage or place the leaf in there and then push it down and maybe that, uh, and that also helps it to bring the juice or the brine above on that leaf uh, to keep the other from being exposed to air. And then you wipe off the rim of the jar and place your lid and ring on it. Well, I'm searching for my little magnet to pull the lids and rings out of the hot water. There it is. Place your lid on there, then grab your ring and uh, place it on there. 
and just snug it down and it's ready to go. Set that one to the side, grab another one, and start filling it. Okay, we're going to finish filling these jars. You kind of see how we do it, and we'll be back. Okay, we got our number three wash tub. We placed the jars down in it. I got four quarts and four pints in the tub. And what I'm gonna do is fill it with water where it just covers the top of the tallest jars. Now mom said you had to make it in the hottest part of the summer. That was the best time to make it. Place your number three wash tub in a shady area. Place your jars inside and fill it with water where it covers the lids uh, on the sauerkraut. This is where I always place mine. It's shady most of the time. And uh, I put a board over it, or like a piece of ply board or something over it just to keep it covered. And this makes sure it's in the shade at all times, but this area of the house is always in the shade. Okay, we have the water up over our jars, and now all we have to do is wait nine days. Now, when I'm waiting, I'll take a jar and try it in nine days. I may wait ten, and I really believe it just depends on what the weather's doing, how hot it is, and all. So, anyways, this is how I make it. Just do your research online. I will take no responsibilities of how your sauerkraut turns out. This is just the way I do it. And uh, I have done some research online to see different ways of making sauerkraut, and you should too. Uh, I have found none, even with my research looking into this, I have found none that do it this way. There are so many ways to make sauerkraut on the internet. All types of recipes and everything. But I have never found any that made it with the wash tub and them submerged in water. After about 10 days, we'll be checking on this sauerkraut to see how it turned out. And we'll tell you in another video. Well, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Give, leave a comment. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I thank you each and every one for watching.